I'm coming out strong with this video title, and I mean it, every word of it. Um, those of you who've been following me for a while, which if you don't, feel free to like, share, and subscribe, uh, know that effectively, uh, I've been covering for years the kinds of things that are now coming out in uh, a lot of mainstream publications, that the lockdowns were uh, garbage, that these mandates didn't do anything for the common person's health, um, that the whole thing made it worse. And in general, um, the press and the state and all of these people were all lackeys in misreporting or, you know, outright, you know, <laughs> causing um, misinformation uh, because it was better for their bottom line, it was better for their profit, and because people like Fauci came out and said, I am the science, etc. Um, so they followed their, their uh, cult leaders, they followed their uh, instincts, uh, and they ended up uh, supporting uh, what amounts to fascism. And I also said that uh, this would all lead to a uh, technocratic dystopia. And uh, guess what? That's coming. The, the exact things that I was saying were going to be here are here now. We have CBDC. We have uh, universal contact-free payments coming everywhere. We have the AI facial recognition super state that I predicted all those years ago. And um, I predicted all of this because I can read and because I looked into ID2020 and uh, the like summits that they were having, you know, fucking <laughs> 302, like all these things that were happening at the time that really sort of made you think if you do that. Um, that there was something uh, a little bit more to this than uh, a pandemic, you know. And then I, I reported that it might have come from a lab, and now basically everybody is like, "Yeah, you know, it might have come from a lab." And uh, I was ca dismissed. I was called insane. I was discredited. Um, I, I was regu regularly accused of ranting, which I rant. And I'm not going to say that I don't rant, but my rants were true. My rants were correct. And um, just to start this whole thing off, um, this is why I'm making this video specifically. Because this chick right here gets paid a huge amount of money to make uh, health and medicine articles and edit the uh, health and medicine section for Scientific American. And she's a co-host of a whole podcast about this. This chick is considered an expert. And uh, if, you, if you look at this uh, profile, well, gosh, it happened. After nearly three years of covering COVID and thinking about it almost constantly... It finally got to her. But rather than focus on how she got it, she's going to tell you how she didn't get it for this long. As though that's what matters. She then goes on this weird little tirade um, where she, you know, goes over all of her articles that she that, 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 that Scientific American approved. Um, and she says that she wore this well-fitted uh, mask, this KN95 mask, and uh, that, that that was good. That prevented her from getting it sooner. Uh, she says that she uh, didn't just wear it some of the time, that she wore it all the time, every single time she was in public, you know, no matter how inconvenient it was. Uh, she also avoided spending time indoors in public as much as possible. She did get on planes for a few times to visit a sick patient who needed her help. But from the moment she left her apartment to the moment she arrived, she didn't take off her mask. I opened the windows in taxis. I didn't eat or drink on the flights, except to sip water while holding my breath. As soon 
as uh, as they became available, she got hers. She got all the boosts. She uh got all these <laughs> And she's still caping for all of this. And so all of this happened, right? She took all these precautions. She followed all this government advice. She did all these things she was told to do. And guess what happened? She still got it. And I don't know if y'all remember, but every time I cover this issue, I always bring up the fact that there are so many uh, doctors and considered professionals who said that everyone was going to get it and that it was inevitable, that it would become endemic. Well, it's endemic now. And she says she has a mild case. So this is what happened. She took all the vax. She did everything she was told. She continued to tell other people to do these things. And eventually, how did that change anything for her? Well, she got it anyway. Just like every single person was going to. Just like all the health experts, including Fauci, repeatedly said, we would all get it. Including Fauci. Who regularly said, you know, well, we'll stop the spread. We'll beat COVID. But then he would say in another interview, no, but we'll all get it, though. <laughs> and now she's got it. The chick who reported from Scientific American that these were all the ways you could stop your like chance of getting COVID. So, just to be super clear, she got it after all that time. And after pushing mandates and all this stuff. And, you know, she's one of the people who, like... Who like would benefit from this amnesty that these journos keep on uh, pleading for, but that doesn't mean anything to the actually, actually real reality that everybody is going to get it. Now, what did I say a couple years ago? Well, the same kinds of things that uh, that that people like Jeffrey Tucker are saying now. That he's saying lockdowns made us sicker. That uh, the media marched in lockstep with the most appalling reach of public policy in our lifetime. Um, and that two doctors from Bakersfield, California, went out on a limb and objected. Their names are Dan Erickson and Artin Masihi from Accelerated Urgent Care. And he goes over a press conference. Well, they, uh, they were right in a lot of ways, uh, and this video was subsequently removed from YouTube. And so, who could have possibly moved outside of lockstep? Who was moving outside of that lockstep along with them uh, all the way back when they were being censored? Well, could it be me? Yeah, actually, it was exactly me. And uh, if you look at over here, I, uh, I directly went over. Well, uh, that would be me. And over here, you can see I directly covered these two doctors and what they were saying and the fact that generally you should expose yourself to pathogens so that your body can adapt, so that your immune system can make you immune. Um, and that not exposing yourself to pathogens not only makes it harder to survive the one that people are trying to survive, but it makes it harder for them to survive all the other ones because they're not outside, because they're not getting the same exposure that they would need, right? I went over this in an article called Let Our People Go, The Medical Case for Reopening Society. Um, and... I went over all of this already. Um, I also later made another article called 10 Ways the Government's COVID Response Worsened Your Health. I made that the same year. I was out of lockstep. 
I made another article, which y'all already know about, which was called Panopticon Rising, uh, COVID-19 and the Elite Enslavement Plan. And all of these articles uh, sort of ramped up to one general conclusion, that the lockdowns were not only making us unsafe and less healthy, but the articles uh, also went over the fact that they were leading us toward a dystopia because they were being used as an excuse to expand surveillance technology. Well, the AP so happened to uh, come out with an article on December 20th. And that article uh, says some very similar things to the thing I was saying would happen nearly three years ago. And it's been that long. It's been nearly three years since I wrote this article. Um, that, wow, police are seizing on COVID-19 tech to expand global surveillance. And it goes over the fact that the cameras that have been installed everywhere, the surveillance tech that has been made ubiquitous, that's being used to control people. That's being used to monitor people. That's being used to <laughs> quell protests. Monitor all of your social media. Turn off your finances. Things that I've been saying would happen since the start of this whole fucking thing. Things that the AP would run cover for the establishment on just like they did in Nazi Germany. So, there's evidence that the health codes have been used to stifle dissent. Wow! Who could have seen that coming? So, basically, um, they, they conclude that these technologies must be more effectively monitored and controlled um, and stop from being used in this sort of way because they're bad for minority rights, they're bad for your civil rights, they're bad for the global south, you know? And they're being used by the worst people ever to continue being the worst people ever. And... You know, I, I think maybe they should realize that this sort of tech is being used in a very similar way in other countries than China. Because it's not just China. It's not just Al-Aqsa. It's the U.S. It's every Western country that will look like this. This is how every Western country will look. Because everything I've been saying has been being proven right. But they can only point at foreign countries. They can only point at, at places that are considered like lower income or whatever. Here we have surveillance by country. Indonesia, right? They have a little slideshow here. Indonesia. Um... Russia, Singapore, Colombia, France, Mexico, Pakistan, South Africa, South Korea. But, you know, there's some places that are conspicuously not there, like Canada, where they were shutting down protesters' pay. Like America, where they can, you know... Isolate your finances and where PayPal can say that you've been misinforming people and cut you off. Where everything that I've been predicting is starting to happen and where the New York Fed is getting a CBDC doing their pilot program right fucking now. The things that I've been saying would happen are happening and... They're happening globally, too, which is why there's articles 
uh, like this about WorldCoin, uh, which is a cryptocurrency for the masses, according to what they say. Um, and they just come around and scan people's irises in the global south so that they can give them better technology and access to blah, 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 exactly like I fucking said they would. ID2020 was literally this. And, and, and here we are with everything that I've been predicting for years starting to come true. WorldCoin's biometric centered approach is facing considerable pushback. The nature of its technology and the lack of clarity about how it will be used are fueling concerns around privacy, security, transparency. Questions are also being raised over whether WorldCoin's products can live up to its ambitious goals. It's signed up more than 700,000 users in some 25 countries, including Chile, France, and Kenya. Many people will be watching the company during this make-or-break year to see how these events will unfold. Will WorldCoin succeed in reimagining digital identity, or will it collapse like so many buzzy cryptocurrencies that have come before? Where it came from? In early 2020, uh, Blania started working with WorldCoin co-founders Sam Altman, former pres uh, president of the legendary Silicon Valley incubator Y Combinator, and uh, Max Novenstern, who previously worked as a financial technology company Wave. The question driving them was a simple one, Blanya says. What would happen if they gave every person on the planet an equal share of a new cryptocurrency? So basically, they are onboarding people to their new cryptocurrency by saying, we will help you not be poor anymore. We will give you a one-world currency that everybody can have access to, and we will give you all an equal share of the start of it. All we need is your biometric ID. You remember when I said that they would muscle these sorts of things in by offering people a piece of the initial pie in terms of cryptocurrencies? Remember that? It's happening. Right fucking now it's happening. And it's happening in your country, even if it's a first world developed country, it's happening there. And it's happening, you know, everywhere that these places like operate as part of this world cabal of like, you know, the WEF, the IMF, uh, the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral Commission, all of these organizations they're all part of this. And they're all hoping you don't notice before it's too late. And they have crippled your economies based on shelter in place, based on lockdowns, based on stop the spread. Two weeks to stop the spread suddenly became two years to stop the spread. And then maybe more if they decide to lock you down again and they have all the power necessary to do so. And they got that power, and they keep that power, based on auspices like, we need to save people from this virus, but what power did it give them? Universal monitoring, universal control, your biometrics being used to watch you at every angle of every place you go and listen to your conversations with ShotSpotter, and all of these technologies being used, they're all going to benefit the elite. And so damn right there are concerns about privacy. This is the present day fascism, and it didn't need to happen in one country. It happened everywhere at once, and everybody is eating it up. Except a select few who know and understand how terrible this is and oppose it. And I want you to be one of those people. So, with that being said... Um, I think this is as good a time as any to tell you. Merry Christmas. Your state is monitoring everything you do, and your gift this year should be to smash the fucking state. <laughs>